Well, I'm paying a flying visit to St. Peter's, and I've been asked to say a few words today. Why am I paying a flying visit to St. Peter's? Well, it's Father Jim McKnight's 90th birthday. We celebrated it yesterday. And Father Jim first came to St. Peter's 60 years ago on supply work. 60 years is a long time, and 90 is even a longer time. Anyway, we're celebrating Father Jim's 90th birthday, he's here with us today, as ever. So I want to say something about today's Gospel in light of the priesthood and Father Jim's work, and then uh, say something about ourselves, and how this little story of Jesus has deep meaning for each and every one of us. Father Jim joined the Rosmanians in 1948, and ten years later, in 1958, he was ordained a priest. And the priest's life is preaching and celebrating the sacrament, all the sacraments. You and I are now celebrating the Mass. The priest offers the Mass in the person of Christ because it's the one sacrifice of Calvary. But all of us, all who are baptized, join in that sacrifice by offering our own lives together with Christ as he dies for us on the cross and he rises with us to share his life. The story of Jesus about the seed is utterly realistic. There's no idealist picture of how everything is going to be perfect. Most of the seed is wasted, or at least appears to be wasted. It falls on rocky ground taken away and eaten by the birds. It is scorched by the sun. So is it a pessimistic story? No. It is the exact opposite. Because there is fruit at the end of the day. Life is messy. Life is muddled. Life is confused. But Jesus is saying, nevertheless, be full of hope. There is going to be a rich harvest, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. What is the good soil? What is the good soil? The human mind is made up of two parts. When it's active and rational, and when it's passive and listening. And we need both parts to be fully human. In our world today, we glorify the rational mind. It produces wonderful technology like the. Uh, <laughs> what well, you're looking for in streaming on television now. Extraordinary technology produced by the rational mind. But the rational mind is not enough. We have to have a deeper mind, a listening heart. And not only do we need a listening heart, we need a humble heart if we are to receive God's word fruitfully. Now take Our Lady and St. Joseph, Mary and Joseph. No spectacular education, humble peasants, 
Yet they received the word of God. And Mary could say, the Lord looked on his handmaid in her nothingness. And that's why she could receive the word of God and ponder it in her heart. And bear a harvest of a hundredfold, as did St. Joseph, her faithful husband. And we are called now, today, to ponder in our own lives. How is God's word penetrating our hearts? We can be observant Christians, at least allegedly. We can come to Mass. We can watch the Zoom on television and join our prayers. But is that changing us at our deepest level? What are the rocky parts of my life where the word of God cannot penetrate? What are the birds of distraction that are stopping me to pause and think and meditate? And then please God, you and I can contemplate, pray, pause, think, adore, and then God's word can penetrate our heart. So as Father Jim set around this parish 60 years ago, and has done many years later, he was a persistent visitor. Uh, every afternoon, hail or shine, he was out visiting parishioners, knowing their names, knowing their children, knowing their grandparents, God knows what. And much of the time, maybe, he didn't seem to have any results. But remember, you and I can never tell what is going on in the human heart. We judge by appearances, God judges by the heart. And only at the end of time, each one of us recognise what effect we have had on other people. And how we have, much to our surprise, brought the good news of Jesus Christ into their lives. So in this funny time that we're living through, let us be optimistic. The word of God endures forever. Nothing can destroy it. Not even COVID-19. <coughs>